Hey everyone, this is Maria from Ninja Chickens here, and today I wanted to do for you a soap making tutorial. I've been making my own cold processed soaps for over 20 years now, and I really enjoy having homemade soaps in the house. It's a pretty easy process, but I know that a lot of people are scared because of using lye as one of the materials. Lye or sodium hydroxide is pretty caustic. But when you mix it with your oils, it neutralizes and creates amazing soap. So today we're going to go over this simple process using lye, water, and oils, and a few little extras to make it fun. I'd love to hear how it goes for you. I will put the recipe in the down box below, and let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is line our soap mold with wax paper. You can use anything you've got on hand, a bread loaf pan, a Tupperware, anything works that you can create a mold from. I've got a 6 by 14 inch box that I line with wax paper making crisp corners and taping it down so that soap does not seep beneath the paper. Next we're going to start with our first two ingredients, water and lye or sodium hydroxide. The water is pretty easy to find, but sodium hydroxide might be a little harder so I'll have some resources in the down bar below. You're going to measure out 16 ounces of water and 200 grams of lye. The next step you want to do outside or in a well ventilated area. We're going to mix the lye into the water. This is an exothermic reaction so it puts off a lot of heat. So put on your gloves and your goggles in case there's any splashing. Head outside and slowly pour the lye into the water. The heat builds up very quickly, so you want to put the lye into the water and not the opposite. Doing it this way can make the exothermic reaction happen a little too quickly, making it possible for this lye water to erupt out of your bowl. Remember, the lye goes into the water. Another important reason for doing this outside or in a well ventilated area is that this water lye reaction puts off fumes that are harmful to breathe. You don't want to breathe it in, so don't stick your head over the pot. Let the air carry the fumes away. Once you've got these mixed, you can check your temperature and see where you're at. We're going to let it cool to about 100 to 110 degrees. After you make sure that your lye water is in a place where no animals can get to it, we don't want them drinking it, head on back inside and we will measure out our oils. We are going to use 19 ounces of olive oil, 14 ounces of palm oil, 15 ounces of coconut oil, and 3 ounces of cocoa butter. First I want to say a little bit of something about palm oil. If you are going to use palm oil in your soap recipes, please be sure that you are getting it from a source that has fair trade and sustainable growing practices. This is very important to our environment, and I will be sure to include one of my sources in the down box below. The next thing I want to tell you about these oils is that this is not the only way to make a soap. You can use any number of oils mixed together to create the soap you want. There are some fabulous websites out there with resources telling you how to make the perfect soap and great ingredients that you can experiment with. This is just my favorite recipe. I'm also creating a recipe that is called 8% super fatted. So if we had just enough oils to neutralize the amount of lye that we have in this recipe. It would be a great cleansing soap, but maybe not necessarily gentle on your skin. So we have made in this recipe an 8% super fatted soap. That means that we have a certain amount of oils left over to nourish your skin at the same time as cleansing it. So now we're going to take all these lovely oils and pour them in a pot, put them on a stove and heat them up also to 100 to 110 degrees or 37 to 43 Celsius. We want to get them to be about the same temperature as your lye water before we mix them both together.
Once both your lye water and your oils are at the correct temperature, it's time to mix them together. So make sure you've got your gear on again. Protect your skin from any splashes. Put your pot where it's easy to access and gently pour the lye water into the oils. Then you're going to get your blender and mix it up. How you blend it is up to you. Some people might use their hands using a hand whisk. Some people might use an industrial drill blender. I just use a blender from my kitchen that's reserved for soap making. What you are trying to do with this process of mixing your oils and your water is called saponification. When the lye, water, and the oils come together, it neutralizes the lye after a period of time and creates a thick soap. So we are waiting for this moment when things start to thicken. It might take five minutes, but it will probably take a little bit longer, usually 30 to 40 minutes of mixing. I know it's a while to wait, but it's very much worth it. After almost 40 minutes, you could see and hear a difference in the fluid. It looked and sounded thicker. It was almost like a thin cake batter. This is the point right here that we call a trace. You'll see it right there. You can trace lines of soap along the top. Once you get to this point, you are pretty much done and ready to pour. But I wanted to add some scent and some colors. So for this soap, we are going to add two tablespoons of essential oil. I had a mix of spearmint, peppermint, and chocolate. Once you've put your scents in, you can just give it a good mix to combine everything. Once your scents are mixed in, it's time to mix in some color. If you want to color the whole thing, you can add color to the main batch and just stir it in like you did the essential oils. I wanted to make a marbled look to my soap, and I wanted to use natural colors to do it. So I took out maybe a quarter cup of soap from the main batch, and I added about a teaspoon of matter root extract to that quarter cup, mixed it in well, and set it to the side. So now it's time to pour your main soap into your mold. I'm sorry to say that the camera was not recording when I poured it, and this isn't a process I can repeat, so hopefully you can imagine what it looked like while we poured. Then I took my matter dyed soap and drizzled it along the top in lines and swirls. Then I took a chopstick and dragged it along the top all the way through the soap to create a marbleized pattern. And now the soap's ready to be covered. You want to keep it warm for the next couple of days while it hardens and the saponification process continues. So I put a cover on mine and wrap it up in some towels and let it sit. I'll usually check on it after 24 hours. Sometimes it's hard enough to cut, but usually it takes two to three days. This batch took 48 hours until it was ready. Once it was hard enough, I could put my finger on the top and it didn't feel like it would indent. So I pulled it out of its mold and sliced it up. You can use whatever you want for cutting. You can use a standard knife. There are also soap cutting tools, whatever makes a nice clean cut for you. 
We've even created a little something so we can measure out exactly an inch so we know our soap is one inch wide. But really, it's whatever you want to use. Once you've cut your soap, it is going to need to sit for at least three weeks before it can actually be used on your body. This will finish the saponification process, finish neutralizing the lye so that the soap is gentle and beneficial for your skin and not caustic. Take your soap once it's cut and put it on a paper bag or an old box and let it sit out for three weeks to finish curing. And then that's it. You've done it. You've made soap. It's ready to use, ready to gift ready to enjoy in your home. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Please let me know if you try it. I'd love to hear your experience with soap making. I'm also going to include some links to some of my favorite soap resources down below for ingredients as well as for homemade soap in case you decide you don't want to try the tutorial but you really want some homemade soap in your home. Thank you all so much for watching and happy making!